Multivitamin and minerals are probably one of the most common supplements on the market, and you can get them everywhere, from pharmacies to supermarkets. But do you really need them? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name is Richie Kerwin, and today we're going to talk all about multivitamins. What they are, what they contain, and if you actually need them. As always, I want to point out that I'm not telling you whether you should start taking a multivitamin or not. Instead, I'm going to explain what they are and in what situations they might be useful. So in this video, we're going to be speaking about multivitamin and mineral supplements. And just to save my voice, I'll use the term multivitamin throughout the video. So if you've ever taken a supplement before, it's quite likely that you've taken a multivitamin because they're considered to be a good general all-around supplement, something that you don't need to think a whole lot about, right? But what does a multivitamin actually contain? Well, the thing is, they can contain almost any mix of vitamins, minerals, and even other substances in whatever dose that the manufacturer wants. There's no set recipe for a multivitamin, but many of them tend to follow some guidelines, particularly the reference nutrient intakes if you live in the UK. Now, obviously everybody is different and we all may have different requirements for different vitamins and minerals. Women, for example, need more iron than men. But just to be safe, RNIs are usually set at a level to make sure 95% of the population's nutrient needs are met so that people don't become deficient in that nutrient. This is why many multivitamins usually contain enough of each nutrient to provide you with at least 100% of the RNI. If you look at the label of your multivitamin, you'll usually see figures next to each nutrient. One will be the amount of that nutrient, which is usually written in milligrams, mg, which is one thousandth of a gram, or micrograms, which is like a funny looking u, g, which is one millionth of a gram. If those seem like small amounts, they are. And that's why vitamins and minerals are referred to as micronutrients, because we need them in very small amounts. Protein, fats, and carbs, on the other hand, are called macronutrients, because we eat them in much larger amounts. The other value you see on the label will usually be a percentage, and often it'll be 100% of the reference nutrient intake. And that's pretty much what multivitamins are for. They often have enough of some of the most common essential nutrients in the right amount to make sure you don't become deficient. But do you actually need them? Well, if you have a well-balanced diet with enough calories and you don't restrict any specific foods or food groups, then the answer is probably no. <gasps> you don't need a multivitamin, as you'll hopefully be getting everything you need from your diet. However, if we look at population data in the UK, we can see that it's actually pretty common for some people to not get enough of certain nutrients, especially calcium, iron, zinc, and vitamin D and vitamin B12. This is often down to people not having well-balanced diets, and it can also be down to restrictive diets that eliminate entire foods and food groups. So for example, if someone doesn't eat red meat, they might have a higher chance of being deficient in iron. Or if someone doesn't eat dairy produce, they have a higher risk of being deficient in calcium or iodine. In fact, there tends to be a higher level of deficiencies seen in vegans than in the general population because they avoid a lot of nutrient-dense animal products. This doesn't mean vegan diets are bad, it just means that vegans should be a little bit more proactive about ensuring they meet all of their RNIs. Another situation where someone can have trouble meeting their RNIs is extended dieting. If someone reduces their food intake for an extended period, they are going to be taking in fewer vitamins and minerals, and that increases the likelihood of becoming deficient in something. In cases like that, for example, someone planning a long diet, like for a physique or bodybuilding competition, taking a multivitamin could be a good idea to make sure they're getting enough of a wide range of nutrients. And in general, that's it. If someone cuts out entire foods or food groups, or if someone is on a calorie restricted diet, taking a multivitamin might be a good safety valve to make sure they don't develop a deficiency. Now, I also wanna comment on two things I mentioned earlier. I said that if someone has a balanced diet, they probably don't need to worry about getting all the nutrients they need. The one exception to that is vitamin D. You see, vitamin D is not really found in high amounts in any common foods. So what's the best source? Well, it's not a food source at all. The best way to get enough vitamin D is through regular sun exposure. This is because you can make vitamin D when your skin is exposed to sunlight. Unfortunately, most people don't get near enough sun. That's why supplementing vitamin D is a good idea for many people and I've done a whole video all about that already. I also mentioned that most nutrients in a multivitamin will have 100% of the RNI. However, there are one or two minerals that are rarely at 100% in a multivitamin. These are calcium and magnesium. This is because the RNI for calcium is 800 to 1000 milligrams, and the RNI for magnesium is 300 milligrams. These are really large amounts as far as vitamins and minerals go, and it's just not possible to fit these into a single 
multivitamin capsule with all of the other nutrients. That's why if you're worried about your calcium or magnesium intake, it may be a good idea to take those as a separate supplement, completely separate from your multivitamin. Which brings me to my last point. If you know that your diet may be lacking in a certain nutrient or that your levels of a certain mineral are low, it might just be a better idea to supplement with that specific vitamin or mineral. You may not need all the nutrients in a multivitamin. So, as that helps you make up your mind about taking a multivitamin, as always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for even more great evidence-based nutrition information.